In 1958, 11 brave men were recruited by NASA to study their body responses to artificial gravitational environments. The objective of the study was to simulate prolonged weightlessness in space. The test subjects were subjected to several physical experiments that would induce motion sickness, such as they were put in a 20-foot slow rotation room for 12 straight days. One would expect them to undergo severe physiological trauma. But the test subjects experienced no such adverse effects. They enjoyed the experience. Were they superhumans? What was the secret to their superpowers? Space exploration and human space flight is the next frontier. It is a direct path to answering fundamental questions like, where are we? How did we get here? Are we alone in the universe? Is there an end to the universe at all? What's really outside of this big blue planet? Such questions fuel the spirit of curiosity in us every single day. And a few people act on this curiosity. They embark on lifelong adventures to capture, to capture images of black hole, to land back rocket boosters, to detect gravitational waves. And who knows, someday we might have tourism trips around the moon and build a centrifuge for deep space travel. As a kid, I was asked what I wanted to become when I grew up. I shouted, astronaut, at the top of my lungs. Little did I know that after 20 years, I'd be an engineer. <laughs> As a space exploration enthusiast and advocate, my goal in life is to pioneer human space exploration and the new space age. I wish to push boundaries of human knowledge into the unknown. I wake up every single day with a very clear purpose, to acquire skills that would someday enable me to lead humans to Mars. A very small percentage of kids grow up to become astronauts. Astronaut selection rate is less than 0.1% among those who even qualify to apply. So what does NASA expect from its astronaut candidates? A bachelor's degree in science or mathematics? Professional experience or pilot in command experience in a jet aircraft? 20 on 20 vision and passing astronauts long duration physical. In short, space agencies hunt for near perfect humans. Let us imagine, for argument's sake, that NASA drops its physical requirement expecting near perfection. Bam! Suddenly, we've got 1.1 million additional people in the US who are eligible to become astronauts. That is right, at this very moment, there are 1.1 million people in the US who qualify the educational and professional requirements, but who have some form of disability. Now, you might question me, hold on, how can people with disabilities become astronauts? That's the most bizarre thing you've heard probably in years. Do you remember the 11 superhumans in the gravitational experiments? The secret to their superpowers was that they were deaf. The vestibular systems were so damaged that it made them immune to motion sickness. The very thing that one might think would classify them as having a disability was in fact an enviable superpower unmatched by a fully hearing person. These experiments laid the foundation to the first human space mission with Alan Shepard in the US in 1961, the first moon man with Neil Armstrong in 1969, and the rest is history. Human space flight is an inherently dangerous feat. In 2001, astronaut Chris Hadfield, commander of the 35th expedition to the International Space Station, went temporarily blind during a spacewalk. In 1997, the Mir space station caught fire due to faulty oxygen canisters and left the space station pitch dark with thick smoke. In 2001, astronaut Leland Melvin experienced bilateral hearing loss during a spacewalk training in Houston. No system can be 100% fail-safe. We only have limited control over, over events, but we can control our response to such adversity. Over the last six decades, we have forgotten a fundamental requirement of human space exploration. One skill that defines mission success, 
one skill that defines how we navigate through adversity, and one skill that differentiates life from death, adaptability. If you want to find people who are experts at adapting to environments not suited for them, and who navigate through such hostile environments every single day, who better than people with disabilities? People with physical disabilities are used to tracking mobility issues, which will help them in zero gravity, and also move into inaccessible areas of the capsule when needed. People with visual disabilities would be the least affected and first to respond during a light outage and a smoke emergency event. People with hearing disability due to damage in vestibular systems would be the first to respond when the spacecraft experiences role instability in space missions. Having to adapt all the time makes people with disabilities better problem solvers due to their enhanced physical senses. By designing for accessibility, we enable an added layer of safety in case of emergencies. By designing for disability, we break conventional wisdom and develop solutions that's beneficial to everybody. Astronauts would then not need to depend on just one type of sensory system to solve problems. By adding just one trained astronaut with disability in the space mission, we are making the mission safer and more efficient. There is a large talent pool of people with disabilities in the world today. Many are more educated and better skilled than fully functional individuals, but they lack direction and support. Employers are still under the misconception that people with disabilities are a liability, and they're reluctant to make workplaces accessible. I have worked with Arise Impact, a disability nonprofit employment readiness training startup from the past two years. We develop and deliver scalable, self-learning, experiential, accessible courses to train people with disabilities towards sustained employment. I worked with people with physical disabilities and visual disabilities from across the globe, and I can assert to the fact that they're mature learners, better observers, and brave, original thinkers. They model empathy and inclusiveness. I urge you to create a change. Employ people with disabilities. Employ them not only because they're more focused and driven, not only because they have better cognitive flexibility, but because they need wings. Wings that will someday benefit your company. Wings that will someday propel them to the doors of NASA and SpaceX. And wings that would someday create a more safer and efficient human space transportation mission with human-centered design. People with disabilities are inherently designed to be the true explorers, true astronauts. Thank you.